Welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurveda healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Welcome back, everyone. We are here on our Total Wellness Tuesday episode, episode 1894 of the Cabral Concept. If you want to follow along today with all of the different show notes, all the different research studies, as well as our daily downloadable PDF, uh, then you can check out stephencabral.com forward slash 1894 for the three big takeaways, all the resources, and all the research-based links always there, uh, typically Monday through Friday for the shows. So let's dive right into it. The topic of the day is, do you have leaky brain? Now, many people have heard about leaky gut before. So leaky gut or intestinal permeability is when you are eating foods and a lot of those protein-based particles or even bacteria or yeast or other types of inflammatory agents are actually moving through your gut wall. And I'll show you what that looks like. So if you're watching this on video, uh, you can actually see this 26 feet or so of intestines right here, right? So we've got the small intestines, about 21 to 23 feet. We've got five to six feet of this large intestine, this colon. And this is meant to be the outside of your body, meaning that when you take food in, right down the esophagus and the stomach, then it moves into your small intestines right here before it moves in the large intestine. All of that meant is actually meant to be the outside of the body, meaning that there's a tube that runs from your mouth all the way out through the anus. And your job is to only let the good stuff into the body. That means absorbing through that small intestinal wall. But what happens is when you have intestinal permeability, well, then you start to allow uh, actual what's called lipopolysaccharides, which are very dangerous to the body. They create inflammation in the body. You allowed food particles to move through, potentially causing larger amounts of food. Um, allergies or food sensitivities too. So my goal for you is to share with you why there is so much discussion now about leaky brain. And if you don't know about leaky gut, that's okay. What I'm going to do today is actually link up at stephencabral.com forward slash 1894 previous podcasts on digestion. Of course, I would love you to check those out because leaky gut is directly associated with leaky brain. And we'll show you the inside of my buddy Walter here. So inside of this skull here, we have your brain, right? Your gray matter or your pink matter right here. And what we are looking to do is understand that almost just like the intestines, well, there's a blood brain barrier. And what we can find right here with this blood-brain barrier is that it's supposed to allow good nutrients in, right? It's supposed to allow glucose and fatty acids, and it's supposed to allow all those nutrients that your brain needs, just like the other cells of your body, uh, all that good nutrition. The problem is that when the blood-brain barrier is not operating correctly or simply that you have too much toxicity in the body, well, now it allows in heavy metals. Now it allows in all sorts of different inflammatory based agents. It allows in fat soluble based toxins because the brain itself is predominantly fat. So when we look at that, we begin to understand that the same thing that's happening to the gut can actually happen to brain, but it's almost inside out, right? The gut, the permeability allows the molecules, whether it be food based bacteria to come into the bloodstream. Well, when it's in the bloodstream, what can happen is actually then it passes in reverse into the brain and the brain becomes inundated with all sorts of different toxins and the circuitry then begins to malfunction. And that's why I have 10 main questions for you today to see, is your brain malfunctioning in a way? Because that's truly what's happening with leaky brain. So now that you know a little bit more about that, I'm definitely going to share more resources towards the end of the show if this is your first time listening to this. But 
You know, a lot of people put on their skeptical hat, and that's okay. I totally understand that. And as I always say every single day in the Cabral concept, because this is a daily show, your job is to accumulate information every day, not just all in one day, because it doesn't stick that way, but it's over a course of time. And I can guarantee you that on this uh, particular podcast, that everything that we do talk about is science based. So it might seem like new information, and you might ask yourself, well, why didn't my medical doctor ever tell me about this? And you have to understand is that medical doctors are brilliant, right? I mean, for the most part, most medical doctors I know are very intelligent people, but they learned a very specific curriculum going through uh, their university, their grad school to get their medical degree. And again, there's nothing wrong with that. It's a great degree. And of course, to get into medical school and to pass medical school and to get your license and your boards and all that, you you have to be pretty smart. You, You do. So, Medical doctors, though, know a lot about acute-based conditions and disease and disease pathology. But what they don't look at typically, uh, except more rare cases, is that there's a holistic way to view the body. And it doesn't take away from conventional medicine, but it's a deeper understanding of how the body begins to malfunction. Because here's the reason why medical doctors don't really learn that. They learn it because they take... uh, pathophysiology, they take toxicology, they take oncology, they take all theologies, as they say. And then so do, so do naturopathic doctors and, and uh, traditional naturopaths and a lot of chiropractors and I would even say some acupuncturists, nutritionists as well. So I'm not saying that other people don't take it, but the issue is this, is that there are levels to it. And if your job as a medical doctor is to diagnose disease and then provide a pharmaceutical outlet, well, your job is not necessarily to figure out the why it happened. So if you work with an integrative health practitioner or you work with a naturopathic doctor, you're going to get the why because they are not going to use pharmaceutical drugs and they're going to ask why, why did this happen? So if you begin to say any of these top 10 questions that I'm about to ask you, um, there's a high likelihood that, well, there's always a why, but that we can figure that out and we can reverse engineer it. But again, I know a lot of people are skeptical and we do have a lot of actually uh, medical doctors and people listen to the show, which is great. So for anybody, I want to provide you always the science behind it. So I'm going to link up two PubMed articles. The first one's called Leaky Gut, Leaky Brain, and it shows you the connection between the two. And then I also want, because there again, we have a lot of psychiatry and psychologists and therapists listen to the show too. And you have to understand is that a lot of people are not getting the benefits that you know they should as a therapist, psychologist, psychiatrist, therapist, uh, because the truth is that their biochemistry is actually off. And we'll be talking about that in just a moment. But if your gut is off and your body's loaded with toxicity... And if you don't believe in toxins, again, we plenty plenty of labs you can run, but also uh, you can just go back and you can listen to my shows on, on detoxification and all the real toxins there are in the world. I mean, there's literally over 100,000 uh, man-made chemicals, and this is by the World Health Organization. It lists them with over 50% typically being carcinogenic, which means causing cancer. But I have another PubMed study, study for you. It is called Leaky Brain in Neurological and Psychological Disorders, the Drivers and the consequences. And I'm just going to read you just a quick excerpt, and then we're going to get into those top 10 uh, questions I have for you to just self-assess. It's basically a quiz to say, do you have the beginnings of leaky brain? And it's okay if you do, because you're actually going to be able to then reverse engineer this. So uh, the background of the study was the blood brain barrier acts as a highly regulated interface. Its dysfunction may exacerbate and perhaps initiate neurological and neuropsychiatric disorders. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the medical research for you, and then I'm going to put it into like literally normal terms because... um, Medical jargon is is all about you know it, it is good it, you do need it so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna uh, discount it too much but it is all about signing sounding very smart to your colleagues and and we simply don't need to put on those uh, hats and masks uh, on this podcast so uh, neurological would be the nervous system and neuropsychiatric would be how the nervous system affects your brain and how your body and how you think so your body actually thinks as well so that's why I don't want to say that doesn't because your nervous system get signals. So this skin right here, the outside of your body gets signals. That's called the peripheral nervous system. And you actually get signals from your gut to your brain as well. And all of this essentially travels through the uh, gut brain axis, which I have a show on that. We'll link that up as well. The gut brain axis, really important how the two are connected. Um, But also 
your nervous system, like if you're not feeling well or you're feeling stressed, it affects the brain, right? So your neurology, your fight or flight um, certainly affects your psychology as well. So let's go over now the rest um, of this. So the results from this particular study, just in case you don't want to read the whole article, says this. Peripheral nervous system, which, uh, inflammation, sorry, peripheral inflammation, which is causatively implicated in the pathogenesis of major psychiatric disorders, is associated with elevated peripheral pro-inflammatory cytokines, which in turn cause increased blood-brain barrier permeability. Reactive oxygen species, such as superoxide radicals and hydrogen peroxide, and reactive nitrogen species, such as nitric oxide, play essential roles in normal blood, brain, barrier, capillary, endothelial cell functioning. However, chronically elevated oxidative and nitro sedative stress can lead to mitochondrial dysfunction and damage to the blood brain barrier. All right. So I told you I would turn all that into normal human language and speak. So what it means is this, wherever you are getting stress in the body, so, uh, over dieting, right. Or you're consuming too much alcohol. We'll go over some of these at the end. You're not sleeping enough. You do have leaky gut. It's a poor diet. You're at food sensitivities, right? Any of these things, if you're taking those things in, whether you're knowledgeable about it or not, meaning like if, if you're eating almonds and almonds are a food sensitivity, well, you're not eating anything bad, right? But it's actually not good for you because it's causing inflammation. So all they're saying is that inflammation, again, from the over-exercise, the over-dieting, the over pretty much anything, over-consumption of alcohol, not enough sleep, uh, so over-activity, all of these things cause inflammation in the body. Now, that inflammation, you might have heard of pro-inflammatory cytokines because of the whole pandemic and viruses, uh, but those inflammatory cytokines and other inflammatory agents like prostaglandins actually then affect this brain, right? So it begins to, as it says right here, break down and damage the blood brain barrier, right? What does it do? It increases permeability. Just like your gut can increase permeability with the alcohol, the stress, the same things, right? Same exact things, the same things that affect the gut, now we know affect the brain as well. So remember, this is all scientifically backed research. So when I share with you these 10 questions, you just know that this is legitimate. And we know that if you're feeling a lot of these symptoms, let's take care of it now because this is serious because these are the things that may ultimately, I said may, right? Not definitely may lead to Alzheimer's, dementia, Parkinson's. Okay. So because again, Parkinson's neurological. So here are the 10 questions I want you to ask yourself. They're very straightforward and they're binary. They're basically a yes or a no, but it could be, uh, it could be really weighted towards a yes, right? So if it's a definite yes, just check it off. All right. We want you to have zero, right? When I give you the rain barrel effect quiz, and by the way, that quiz is just at, um, it's completely free now. Go to stephencabral.com forward slash assessments. The rain barrel effect quiz that I give in my book, completely free online. Take it as many times as you want. There's no email opt-in. There's nothing. It's completely free. So definitely check that out. Okay. So here's what I want to share with you. There's 10. I want you to get a score of zero. If you have a one or a two, not so bad. A three or above, we need to work on it, okay? But that's okay, because we're going to give you what to do at the end, how to work on it. So the first one is this. Do you suffer from a low mood? All right, what is a low mood? Well, it's just, it's kind of like you're a little bit down. You don't have a lot of zest for life. You don't have a lot of vitality. You're not enjoying life. It's just not having a lot of fun. You don't have a positive outlook. You might have seasonal, more of a seasonal affective disorder. And yes, these things can have to do with vitamin D and other things, but we know vitamin D actually is neuroprotective. So um, just ask yourself, do you have a low mood? The majority of the time, like again, we all get into a low mood every once in a while. But if you're in a low mood daily, that's certainly a yes in that category. Okay. Number two is this, are you chronically inflamed? And I'm not talking about from your workout. But even that does matter. But are you chronically inflamed? Like every day is your body sore. Every day is your body stiff and tight. Do you have joint pain? That's chronic inflammation. All right? So really, really important. You could probably put skin rashes under that as well, right? That's, that's definite inflammation. If you have skin rashes, your skin is what? Well, it's inflamed. So you know that you have a lot of inflammation in your body. Does that inflammation stay just at your skin or joints? No, it's systemic. So it's affecting the brain as well. All right. Number two is, are you chronically inflamed? Number three is, are you bloated? Are you bloated most days of the week? And that means, do you have digestive difficulty most days of the week? 
because that's going to lead to gut-based issues. If it leads to gut-based issues, well, we've got a whole lot more toxins in the body, even if they're food particles or endogenous particles, and that affects the brain. The fourth is this. Do you have food sensitivities? And you may not know that you do or not, but I'm going to say this. Do you get gas? Do you get cramping? Because those can be signs. Even acid reflux can be signs of a food sensitivity. All right, so that's number four. Number five is, do you have increased signs of aging? So do, and I'm talking about coming on fairly rapidly, meaning like, you know, if you're 72 years old, uh, do you see some wrinkles and some thinning hair? And yeah, you're going to, there's no doubt about it because, you know, we all age. That is how it happens. And so there's natural aging, like there's a natural grain of the hair over many years, or all of a sudden your hair is just turning gray, or all of a sudden your hair is getting thinner, or all of a sudden uh, your hair is falling out, or your uh, nails are really becoming flimsy, your skin's becoming much thinner. Those are more rapid signs of aging. Now, if you have those signs, of course, that is definitely fixable. But if you do have those signs, that's a greater sign of what's called the reactive oxygen species that they were talking about in the article, the ROS, reactive oxygen species, okay? So again, does that affect the brain? Yes, it does. So increased signs of aging, we just talked about that, the skin, the hair, the nails, without a doubt, check that out. Number six is this, do you get chronic headaches or migraines or let's call it head tension? If you do, well, there's a good sign that there is localized at least stress, tension, blood flow, vascularity issues towards the brain, okay? Now, could those be caused by foods? Yes. Could it be caused by histamines and other pro-inflammatory? Without a doubt, right? But it is affecting your brain. So do you often get head tension, headaches, migraines? Really important. And even headaches once a week is an issue. It really is because it means there's something imbalanced in the body. Number seven is, do you often get brain fog? Do you wake up groggy or do you get brain fog, grogginess throughout the day? And that's an issue for sure. Can it be related to thyroid? Can it be related to adrenals? 100%. You have low cortisol in the morning, low thyroid, you can certainly lead to brain fog. But again, that's an imbalanced nervous system because the HPA axis and the HPT axis, hypothalamus, right? hypothalamus right here in the brain, uh, pituitary gland sends the signals through the nervous system to the adrenal glands as well as the thyroid. And that's the HPA and HPT axis. And they do affect each other. And yes, they can lead to metabolic issues as well as brain fog. Number eight, this is an interesting one. I wanted to add this because for sure, this is not normal even with aging. Do you lack ambition? Do you lack drive? I put that in there very specifically because that can mean that you're running low on your excitatory neurotransmitters like dopamine. And if you begin to run low on that, well, sure, you feel like lack of ambition, lack of, lack of drive, no doubt about it. But that could potentially, it may, the word may is in there and it's, it's uh, italicized, it may uh, lead to Parkinson's or other issues in the, down the road if that dopamine does get too low and certainly we, we don't want that. Okay, so that's lack of ambition, lack of drive with neurodegeneration. Number nine is nervousness and anxiety. So on the other side of the spectrum, instead of lack of drive, uh, lack of ambition, we have nervousness or anxiety, which can be different neurotransmitters, more of the inhibitory ones, such as serotonin and GABA. Serotonin, I, I typically call it the happy hormone. GABA, I call it the anti-anxiety hormone. So if you're lacking those neurotransmitters, and again, there's a great test that you can run. Uh, Equilife has that test, and you can go just go to equa.life, E-Q-U-I dot L-I-F-E forward slash labs, and you're welcome to look at all the different labs over there. But you can actually test these neurotransmitters and they have now the underpinnings of why they might be lower uh, tyrosine, lower tryptophan, and, and lower, like you just look at all the different precursors. So really important to look at this because uh, this could be a sign of burnout for sure. Uh, but again, if you're not producing enough of those inhibitory neurotransmitters, then as I said, as a psychologist, psychiatrist, therapist, it's going to be difficult to help your patients uh, and your clients get the results they're looking for. 
All right, number 10 is this, the last one. Do you suffer from forgetfulness? And I'm not talking about every once in a while forgetting where you put your keys, but I'm talking about on a daily basis, forgetting names, forgetting what you did yesterday, forgetting why you just walked into the bedroom. Uh, again, forgetting your keys every day where they are. Every once in a while, no big deal. Daily basis, this is an issue. It can have to do with too high a cortisol, too high adrenaline. It can actually be on the other side, really, really low cortisol and energy output as well. So there are always different factors for this, but we know that high levels of cortisol burns our brain cells. We know high levels of cortisol creates inflammation, and we know that it can lead to one of the cofactors or, yeah, one of the factors that can lead to Alzheimer's and dementia. So again, these are all things that can be tested, that can be looked at. Uh, running the big five for sure will look at your protective properties with omega-3s, food sensitivities. It'll look at hormones, it'll look at cortisol, it'll look at thyroid. So the big five is definitely the best for that. Uh, but again, not everybody's going to run that. I totally understand. But maybe maybe you don't need to, right? Maybe you can start to then look at these factors, which I just want to list for you because I know I'm getting towards my time here today. I like to keep these shows right around 20 minutes for you. But just ask yourself. I'm going to run through a nice little list uh, that is this. Are you dealing with chronic stress? Are you dealing with chronic dieting, systemic inflammation from, again, exercise or whatever it might be, poor nutrition? Are you running low on antioxidants, not enough fruits and vegetables? Did you suffer some type of um, brain trauma before, or head trauma, concussions? Uh, do you have dysregulated levels of blood sugar? What about higher levels of homocysteine or CRP on your blood work? Could that be related to low B vitamins or low vitamin C or low vitamin D? those antioxidants, the B vitamins for sure, for homocysteine. Are you being exposed to environmental toxins, even without your knowledge? I mean, the average woman, 168 uh, toxins she's exposed to. Uh, do you suffer from autoimmune diseases? Have you been exposed to heavy metals? Do you drink tap water that contains fluoride and chlorine and heavy metals like aluminum? Do you suffer from higher levels of oxidative stress or free radical damage? Do you have poor sleep? Are you dealing with chronic infections, which typically is a sign of a weakened or imbalanced immune system? Or do you, can, do you consume alcohol more than once a week, maybe twice a week maximum? So these are all things that you should look at that can lead to yeses on the top 10. And I would say if you have all no's, great. But if you're doing a lot of the things that I just named above, well, that can be an issue that can lead to yeses in the future. So let's start to clean up some of those. So right now, I'm going to give you some more free information to kind of tune into next. I did a podcast just a couple weeks back on how to complete a brain detox where I talked about the glymphatic system that helps with a lot of these things. So it was episode 1852. So if you go to stephencabral.com forward slash 1852, you can check that out next. Of course, we'll link it up uh, today in the show notes. I also have a whole category on digestion, which talks about leaky gut as well. So again, at stephencabral.com forward slash 1894, we'll link that up. And I would highly recommend running the big five labs or at least the digestive labs if you're dealing with uh, bloating, gas, cramping, or digestive-based issues, food sensitivities, inflammation, skin rashes, uh, if you just need at least a place to start. So big five labs ideally because uh, it's going to include the candida metabolic and vitamins test plus the food sensitivity test, uh, but you can also run those on their own as needed. And again, that's at equa.life forward slash labs. Hopefully this show was helpful helpful here today. Remember, I will be back always doing more follow-up shows on these categories. Just let me know if this was important to you. If this, you know, if you learned something from this and what else you would like to learn about this in the future, I for sure will add it to my own notes for future podcasts. And of course, if this show is helpful, please do feel free to pass it along to anyone else you believe it could serve. Take care, everyone. Thanks so much for joining me here today on The Cabral Concept. And before you go, I want to make sure you know that right now, going on over at equa.life, we are actually giving away one of the most popular products we have offered over the past 12 months. And that is one of the best immune boosting products out there. It is our alkalizing vitamin C. The alkalizing vitamin C, which contains buffered magnesium, calcium, and potassium, actually makes it easy on the stomach and the gut while delivering more than two grams of vitamin C per serving. This is absolutely one of the best vitamin C formulations out there. It's easy in the gut, easy to absorb, and also provides you with
with those alkaline buffering minerals at the same time. You can get your bottle completely free on all orders over $99 right now over at equa.life. That's E-Q-U-I dot L-I-F-E. I have to say this is while supplies last. We reserve 500 free bottles for this giveaway. And no doubt about it, they will go fast. Get your free bottle of alkalizing vitamin C over at equa.life, E-Q-U-I dot L-I-F-E. Enjoy the product and let us know how it went for you.